deeply saddened by what I'm now going to say. I believe catastrophe is the only way in which an com overly complacent and comfortable society begins to understand the need to change. And whether it be the rise of tyrants, whether it be atrocity on a more limited scale, such as 9-11, it doesn't matter what the disaster is. I mean, I, I serve on the Institute of Medicine Influenza Task Force. And just to show you how banal it's all become, the retreat from complexity had a very well-groomed member of the administration who was the equivalent of Brownie from a previous administration turn up and say, oh, the nation, we do have to deal with a slight problem. There might not be enough vaccine available uh, for the nation at large, uh, but we have the following program laid out, except, well, we'll have 160 million doses by the end of October. There's a Simpsonian cartoon, the Simpsons cartoon would say, duh, because you would only have to do the most elementary logistical analysis to know that the most we would have was 20 million, which is exactly what we did have. And the retort given by the administration was the fact that we've ordered it. Right? That's, that's the level, tragically, at which contemporary governance now has to operate because you can't expose the public to difficult, complex issues without the loss of your own leadership. And that's the tragedy because many of the people who've committed their lives to government are deeply motivated to try and solve these problems, but they're trapped in this conundrum until a catastrophe occurs. And I'm deeply saddened to say that. If you actually said to people today, did the swine flu epidemic slash pandemic, was it more dangerous than 1968 and 1957? What would everyone, in the, well, let's do a poll. I probably created a predisposing question here. Who thought that that epidemic this year was worse than what had gone before from what you read in the media, 57 and 68? For most people, it was a yawn. I won't bore you with the poll. But if you quantify it in terms of years of life lost, if the average lifespan for a female is 82 and for a male is 80, if a 20-year-old dies, you call that 62 or 60 years of life lost. The H1N1 pandemic this year, the data has just come out, was more dangerous than 1968 or 1957. What do you think the response of American society is going to be the next time around someone uses the word pandemic? I have three slides. One shows the cover of The Economist with the Grim Reaper going by. The next one shows the cover of The New Yorker, the end of the world sale is nigh. And then the, ones, the New York Post says, ho-hum. What do you think the response is going to be when the one we thought was coming, H5N1, the avian virus, which is still out there, when that mixes its genes with something which was like pig flu, easily transmitted, but 80% of people who get the avian flu die. It, I wouldn't want to be the individual who had to say a pandemic's coming because society won't respond to it until it's too late. I mean, as you probably, many of you are observers of this, if this was extrapolated to the 1918 pandemic, then we would have lost anywhere between 25 and 45 Ameri million Americans, million Americans, within six months. Can you imagine how the, this cocoon society would have dealt with that and the political leaders who were in, present at that time? So catastrophe, much as I'm saddened to say it, is the true catalyst of change.